This is Shang-Chi. Created by Marvel Comics in direct response to the fact that in the 1970s literally everyone was kung fu fighting, Shang-Chi is about to transform the Marvel Cinematic Universe into the Marshall Cinematic Universe. Welcome to Explainiac, I'm Dan Casey. Today we're diving deep into the history of Shang-Chi, Marvel's martial arts master who will make his debut in the MCU's Phase 4. Has this ever happened to you? Were you a martial arts prodigy who had to endure rigorous training at the hands of your father, who told you that he was the savior of mankind and this kind, benevolent man, but really turned out to be like this sinister crime lord slash sorcerer slash outdated stereotype named Fu Manchu? And then he made you go out and murder his enemies, but you found out the truth and realized that daddy was a baddie? So you dedicated yourself to truth, justice, and punching things like so hard they explode into a fine red mist? Has this ever happened to you? If so, you might be Shang-Chi. Call me, Don Cave, right now, 1-900-JUSTICE. Seems like a reputable lawyer. Created by Jim Starlin and Steve Englehart, Shang-Chi first appeared in 1972's Special Marvel Edition number 15, which was later renamed The Hands of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu. The character became incredibly popular, starring in his own series for a decade before falling by the proverbial wayside. That is, until now. Marvel wanted to cash in on martial arts mania that was sweeping the nation in the 1970s by licensing the popular TV show Kung Fu. Unfortunately, it was owned by Warner Brothers, who also owned DC Comics. So of course they said, absolutely not. Marvel did what they thought was the next best thing. They bought the rights to the villainous and now incredibly problematic Dr. Fu Manchu from pulp novelist Sax Romer's novels, much to the chagrin of Jim Starlin, who once lamented, I've never read any of them and had no idea how racist the books were. Yikes. Nevertheless, Shang-Chi was introduced as the secret son of Fu Manchu. He was a living weapon subjected to a brutal training regimen and sequestered away in his father's lair in China's Honan province. Shang-Chi was homeschooled in all manner of academic disciplines, as well as how to punch a hole the size of a grapefruit through your torso. When he was a teenager, his father finally tasked his lonely little punch boy to prove himself by traveling to London to assassinate the humanitarian Dr. James Petrie. Having taken Fu Manchu's world's best dad monk a little too literally, Shang-Chi believed that he was doing something noble, when in fact he was murdering an innocent man in cold blood. Now before he could leave, Shang-Chi found himself face to face with Sir Dennis Nayland Smith, or Sir Denis Nayland Smith. There's only one end, and I don't know how they meant it. Anyway, he was an MI6 agent who worked alongside the late Dr. Petrie to foil Fu Manchu's dastardly schemes. Smith told Shang-Chi the truth about his dad, who was actually a mass murderer with dreams of world domination, and used a potion called the Elixir Vitae to prolong his wretched life. Returning to Honan, Shang-Chi's mother confirmed the terrible truth and prompted Shang-Chi to leave behind the only family he ever knew. Lamenting the loss of his father, he begins his new mission to bring his daddy's evil empire to its knees. Working alongside Sir Dennis or Denis Nayland Smith, I'm just gonna go with Dennis, you have to deal with it. Working alongside Sir Dennis Nayland Smith, Shang-Chi went on many covert missions for MI6 and Smith's own agency, Freelance Restorations. In addition to Smith, Shang-Chi fought alongside the likes of MI6 agents Blackjack Tar, Clive Reston, and Leiko Wu, the last of which would become his love interest. And of course, he also worked alongside Dr. James Petrie, who wasn't actually dead because that fateful night so many moons ago, Shang-Chi had killed a robot instead of the real Dr. Petrie. You know, because comics. Naturally, Fu Manchu sent his army of Sifan assassins to try and kill his wayward son, including Shang-Chi's adoptive brother, Midnight. Shang-Chi's half-sister, Fa Lo Sue, also made frequent appearances, but she mostly just tried to recruit Shang-Chi to her own sect of assassins so they could then just usurp their fiendish father's criminal empire together. <laughs> you know, typical sibling stuff, which I wouldn't know anything about because I'm an only child. What am I supposed to do? Overthrow my dad by myself? Shang-Chi's espionage exploits culminated in a final showdown with his dad at the compound where he grew up. With his elixir vitae no longer prolonging his unholy existence, Fu Manchu needed the next best thing to maintain his youthful complexion, his son's blood. Basically, Fu Manchu plans to use his son like a blood bag from Mad Max Fury Road, slowly draining Shang-Chi of his life force to restore his own cursed vitality. 
Now, after being showered in snakes, fighting a giant mantis, and burning a man alive with a brazier, Shang-Chi confronts his broken old man, pouring out the last vial of his blood on the floor and leaving the man who raised him in a sad little heap as he feverishly tries to lick the blood off the ground as the building implodes. Gross. Now, much like how Thanos retired to LARP Stardew Valley at the end of Infinity War, Shang-Chi also left his life of spycraft behind to live a quiet existence as a fisherman in the mountains of China. Of course, as we all know, when it comes to being a superhero, no one stays retired for very long. Over the years, Shang-Chi fought alongside the X-Men to prevent Kingpin from recreating the Elixir Vitae. He joined the likes of Black Widow, Daredevil, Dagger, and Moon Knight in a group dubbed the Marvel Knights to try and bring the Punisher to justice. And he served as a superhuman bounty hunter with Heroes for Hire alongside Misty Knight and Colleen Wing, following the passage of the Superhuman Registration Act during the Civil War story arc. Now, during his time as a member of the Avengers, Shang-Chi used Pym Particles to grow to a truly massive size so he could fight an ancient dragon awoken by the murderous ninja cult, The Hand. He also wound up gaining the ability to create dozens of duplicates of himself, kind of like Naruto using Kagebunshin no Jutsu. And if they don't put both of those things in the MCU, well, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna text Kevin Feige a frowny face emoji every day until he politely asks me to please stop. Speaking of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Shang-Chi will make his big screen debut in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which hits theaters on February 12th, 2021. Announced at San Diego Comic-Con, the film will be directed by Destin Daniel Cretton, written by David Callaham, and star Simu Liu as the eponymous ass kicker. But what about those Ten Rings? Do you remember in Iron Man? They're the ancient religious organization turned shadowy insurgent group led by the Mandarin, AKA the one that British character actor Trevor Slattery impersonated in Iron Man 3, great movie. This time around, we're gonna meet the real deal played by the amazing Hong Kong actor, Tony Lung Chu Wai. Based on the fact that Marvel no longer owns the rights to Fu Manchu, who they had to rename Zhang Zhu in the comics, and how problematic and outdated the original character was, my theory is that they're replacing Fu Manchu with the Mandarin as Shang-Chi's villainous father figure in this updated adaptation of his origin story. Now, one clue supporting this, and this is kind of a tenuous connection, is in Fu Manchu's very first appearance in Special Marvel Edition number 15, in which he references being a Mandarin. Now, obviously, Mandarin was a title granted to bureaucratic scholars in Imperial China, but it still raised an eyebrow nonetheless because my entire life is dedicated to overthinking things. Now, perhaps the Mandarin has finally emerged from hiding and he's ready to take revenge on those who besmirched his good name, and he's gonna use his living weapon of a son to do his dirty work. A bigger question mark surrounds Aquafina, who was confirmed to be a part of the cast during Marvel's Hall H panel at San Diego Comic-Con. Will she be playing Shang-Chi's intelligence agent ally, Leiko Wu, or his scheming sibling follow Sue. Only time will tell. But in the meantime, tell me, what do you think? What do you want to see from a Shang-Chi movie? How do you think they'll update the Mandarin for modern audiences? Let me know in the comments below and give me a thumbs up while you're there. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please share this video with your friends and hit that little notification bell so you never miss a new episode of Explainiac. And if you want even more Marvel deep dives, make sure to check out past episodes of Explainiac right now on all of Nerdist channels. And if you have suggestions for future episodes, please leave them in the comments or tweet me directly at Dan Casey. This is an evolving process and I want you to be a part of it. Now remember, not everything in life can be explained, but for everything else, there's this show.